About seven years ago, I built this Gigabyte X99 SLI based computer that cost me so much money, I just about went hungry and stretched my credit card to pay for it. For the outlay, I thrashed the guts out of it for six years, and it was a super reliable computer, but eventually a single piece of 8 gig DDR4 memory failed, so I started using its replacement. I shouted it another 64 gig of DDR4 memory and it still ran perfectly but at over six years old, it was relegated to my experiment box and it has so far seen two Xeon CPUs to see what they ran like. Recently I have upgraded two separate computers to the fastest E5 series version 3 Xeons I have seen. As I had to diagnose a memory problem with a different computer, I ended up with another 64 gig of DDR4 so I added that to the existing 64 gig to end up with 128 gig of DDR4 memory. The fun part has been the price of the E5 2696 version 3 Xeon CPUs. The first one cost me about $150 Australian, the second one cost me about $100 and this last one cost me about $80. The bottom has dropped out of the price of Xeon CPUs from China, and the interesting part is that all three had never been used, they were all brand new. The original price for this model Xeon CPU was over $4,000 American. With the following synthetic benchmarks, I have used an old version of Cinebench, version 20, and an old version of CPU-Z, as they were contemporary with this era of Haswell hardware. The first CPU-Z screen identifies the CPU as a Xeon E52699, but the spec directly in the CPU identifies it as an E52696. The second CPU-Z screen shows both the single-core and the multi-core results. At over 400, the single-core performance is faster than any other Xeon I have tested, and the multi-core result at over 7000, is substantially faster than the previous 14-core Xeon. The Cinebench result also shows the power of the 18-core CPU and is again a lot faster on multi-core workloads than any other Xeon I have tested. Synthetic benchmarks have their place, but by far the most useful tests are based on the work you do with the computer. The following two dialog screens are respectively my old i7 clocked at 4 gig named as Hutch, and the 18-core Xeon named as Haswell, running at its default 2.6 to 2.8 gig, on all 18 cores. Both CPUs run at near 100% on all cores. The old i7 processes a 1.3 gig 4K, 60 frames per second video in 19 minutes and 33 seconds. The 18-core Xeon processes the identical file in 11 minutes and 16 seconds, more than 8 minutes faster on a single file. The great advantage of the Xeon, apart from its multi-core performance, is it does not peak over 50C with large cooling, and can maintain a high workload for long periods. With an 18-core Xeon and 128GB of DDR4 memory, the old monster rides again. It is more than useful and easily fast enough. Most of its components have been replaced over time, and apart from the board, and an early Intel NVMe SSD as its boot drive, it's a reasonably up-to-date computer running the current version of Windows 10 64-bit. One downside is it cannot be updated to Windows 11, which may be a blessing in disguise. This computer was not built as a gaming machine. It has a legacy NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 video card with 4 gig of memory, which was hot stuff seven years ago but hardly fast enough for modern gaming. It would make a reasonable fist of many games but if you have big money to spend, you can build a much faster gaming machine. For a workstation, the old NVIDIA video card produces very good 4K and 1080 video at 60 frames per second so it is still viable for its intended purpose. An 18-core Xeon update for a Gigabyte SLI board. Great bang for your buck and comes at the right price. If you are updating an X99 computer, I hope you get a great result. The video and sound are copyright, Steve Hutchison, and all rights are reserved. I am Jack, your narrator for this video, a truly modest high-tech, text-to-speech voice, and I could tell you about the appalling conditions I have to live under, left for dead most of the time, to sleep in a development computer, unloved and unappreciated. But nobody wants to listen, I just have to suffer in silence.